Mixed lighting is usually that thing that we portrait photographers try to avoid at all costs. In this tutorial, I want to show you how mixed lighting, when used well, can actually add a lot of visual interest to your photographs. Let's dive in. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends, my name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. It's wonderful being here with y'all. Now, like always, let's not waste time. We're gonna dive straight into this. This is part two of our mixed lighting series. And if you haven't seen part one, go back and watch it because that's where we discussed what is mixed lighting and what are some simple solutions to it. We're gonna pick up from there and I'm gonna show you why I like to incorporate mixed lighting in an appropriate way to add visual interest to your photographs. So first, let's talk about kind of what we're trying to avoid. So if you remember from the last tutorial, we're trying to avoid situations where we essentially have mixed light that's crossing over the face, right? One color here, one color here. So the simple solution that we gave was when you go into a room, go ahead and turn out the lights, which we did in this scene, and then face your subject towards the strongest light source, which is the window. The room that she's in is very unique, kind of has a lot of color. So when we do this, we still end up with a pretty interesting image. What I often find is that I'm working in hotel rooms that are a little bit more plain. And when I turn out all of the room lights, I end up with photographs like these. And don't get me wrong, these are great photographs. This is a first look between the bride and her father, and it's a nice set of images. They're really well lit. They're going to yield great images. But what I find personally, just from an artistic standpoint, is the colors kind of look a little bit sterilized. I refer to it sometimes to our team like we're pasteurizing the colors, right? You're running it through and processing it. And what you get is just a little bit less interesting and authentic to me, at least. These are, again, kind of my thoughts, my approach and opinion to this. So this is what it looks like with that more plain sort of look. And if you dig this look, then by all means, stick with it. But let me show you another option. Another option is to leave some of the background lights turned on. And what you end up getting, this is kind of mom helping daughter get ready. What you end up seeing in this in a very similar set of photographs are images that have a lot more depth and color to them. The subjects are still being lit by that window light, but we've left the background lights on. So you end up with well, just a bit more color in the photograph. My preference is the image on the left side. So across the board in each of these, my preference is this side. But they're all rules to doing it well. And the main thing here, if you think about what we're trying to avoid, we're trying to avoid mixed light over the face. So the first rule that I want you guys to employ is you're gonna turn off any lights that actually cross over the face. So for example, I'm using the window to light my subject, right? I'm using the window for this bride. So if there's any incandescent bulbs that are above her that are shining into her face, I want to still turn those off. Step two, with any of the background lamps, you want them to be on the subtle side. Now, fortunately, most lamps have dimmers or multiple bulbs or anything like that. But if a lamp is too bright, it can draw a lot of attention. So I'm always kind of turning down the brightness of those lamps or simply bring your subject closer to the window so you can kind of dial down the exposure, get them brighter, bring the background down. But you'll notice that in each of these cases, I'm bringing the background down so that the tungsten isn't overpowering in that background. So the key here is separation. We're making sure that the face of our subjects is lit with one light source and the background features another. I'm going to show you this in a different context and you're going to see from the behind the scenes exactly how this goes. So when we walked into this scene, I'm going to go ahead and reset this out so you guys can see the image. It was fully tungsten. Windows were all drawn. We saw only tungsten lights all over. And you might be looking at this and going like, well, Pi, the you know color balance is way off to begin with. So I'll correct it. So watch this. We'll correct it. I'll take a, a white balance read off of that fireplace by pressing W. And then I'll adjust it so her skin tone looks about right. Okay, we can even adjust the brightness, whatever we want to do. As soon as I got into this scene, I did the same thing that I do when it came to weddings. I wanted a more dynamic looking image. This doesn't do it quite for me. 
So what I noticed was that there were curtains and I opened up those curtains just enough to get a good spot of light onto my subject. So I'm kind of using the curtains to control light, which I'll often do in weddings as well. The next thing that I did is I turned off some of the ambient light. See, I don't need all these tungsten lights. I don't need the overheads. I don't need anything else. What I need is just that daylight and just this lamp. And I believe I even looked to see if I can get the lamp a little bit dimmer as well. Now, once we had this set up, I took the second shot. And this is straight out of camera, no adjustments whatsoever. And you can look, even with the proper white balance setting on this, the image on the right to me is so much more dynamic, so much more polished visually, despite almost virtually the same pose, the same everything, the same composition. We have something right in camera raw that looks fantastic. So this is once again, we're balancing daylight with that tungsten light. And what was the key here? Well, we separated the light sources. We kept the tungsten kind of more as a background element. We kept the daylight more as a foreground element. And we also kept the tungsten light a bit darker. So we're not, had I kept these other lights on, it would have been overpowering. So we're also dimming them down and only keeping certain lights to add a little bit of that ambiance back into the photograph. Okay, let's do one more of these. Again, let's go to a wedding in a slightly different situation now. So this one is a great example of this. Now I would say that this shot can sort of work, but you notice that on his face, we do get quite a bit of tungsten. The reason why it somewhat works is usually like when I do split lighting like over a face with mixed lighting, I'll kind of draw a line with like the, the nose. So I kind of keep that light on one side as kind of like the, the rim or kind of like you know the highlight point. And then I have another color on the other side. And you'll see people doing this a lot when it comes to gelled work in fashion and that kind of stuff. They'll kind of divide the face with different colors. That's a whole diff different thing, but it's kind of using the same techniques where we're separating the light sources and making sure that it kind of transitions nicely and in a flattering way. Here, I do feel like he might be a little bit too close to this light. See, I love the way that, that light is adding this yellow kicker to the hair here. But for him, it's a bit too much for me. So what I'm gonna do in this scene is kind of just change my angle a little bit. So all I did was instead of shooting this straight on, and, and this is still a photograph that I would deliver, by the way, not, not to say that this is not deliverable. If he were behind the light and the light were just right in his face, covering the whole face, probably not so much. But all I did was shift the angle. And now the yellow light becomes this beautiful rim and kind of highlight on the shoulders and the body. Once this is developed, so I actually developed this, I believe this is with Visual Flow Pastel, so it kind of is more of a pastel tone. Once it's developed, it has this bright look, and we get this beautiful highlight across the skin, and I love the way that it looks. I did another sequence of these where we bring him forward, we again turn the chin so that the highlight is just along that side of the face, and we get this great look that's so much more dynamic to me. Notice how I've turned her face away from the light on this one, so it's kind of away, getting most of the light on the hair, his is towards getting the highlight on the side of the face, but you can see separation between the light. That's what we're talking about. When you wanna use mixed lighting, don't be afraid of it. Just make sure that you're separating it on the face so that you're not getting this crossover look that's very unflattering. And to go back, what is that crossover look? Well, let's go to this entire thing and I'll show you. So in each of these cases that we're using mixed lighting, we're preventing the light from crossing over the face like it did in this case where it was super unflattering. And the way that we do that for the most part is just positioning. Positioning of where our subjects are, positioning where our camera angle is, modifying the background lights. That's all we're doing. And then we're able to use mixed lighting in an effective manner to add visual interest. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I like diving into these kind of nuanced techniques and things like that. Uh, I don't know, I really love the why behind everything photography, the why behind everything that I learn. So if you guys enjoy this process, be sure to leave me a comment below. Let me know what else you guys would like me to dive deep into and I will cover it. In the meantime, y'all can help out the channel by subscribing, give the video a thumbs up. That helps us out greatly on Adorama TV. And we have tons of incredible creators that are uploading new videos every single day. So if you wanna be notified, turn on your notifications. In the meantime, y'all can find me at Pygersa on Instagram. That's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.